Welcome back into the Sports Source, the segment of our program brought to you by Madisonville Marine. They have the best selection of boats anywhere in East Tennessee. I mean, they've got deck boats, they've got pontoon boats, they've got fishing boats, anything you can imagine under one roof. So you don't have to go, well, I want to really look at this type of boat, so let's go to this type of dealership. I want this kind of boat, so let's go to this dealership. They've got them all at one dealership, one roof, one huge lot. Check it out for yourself. MadMarine.com is where you can learn more. Highway 411 North in Madisonville is where you can visit them. Madisonville Marine, there's no better place to buy a boat. All right, I uh, wanted to quickly mention, these are the pitfalls of doing a morning show, 11 a.m., and Jerry Palm putting up his bracket right beforehand. Sometimes when you're having to rebuild graphics five minutes before uh, said show, you don't build them correctly. So what we were talking about earlier with those teams you could play, where it said first round, second round, it really just meant first, it meant the highest seeds you could play throughout. So it wasn't first round, Sweet 16, et cetera. It's too late now, but I'm telling you, if you look at that saying, that can't be right. Yeah, the seed stuff on the left, the, the actual round you would be playing those teams, that wasn't right. My apologies, but when you're having to retype this stuff right as you go to show, that's the pitfall you run into. But the teams are correct. Anyway, that said, Mark Pankratz, Isaiah Victor, you guys have been, you coached in SEC tournaments. You played in SEC tournaments. Uh, we talked about Tennessee before the SEC season started. We said their schedule is backloaded. We warned everyone what was going to happen, and it did. We said 15-3, and three. it went 15-3, and three, and it was backloaded, you lost at the end. Are you concerned, however, that you finished 4-3, and three, any concern of a carryover into the SEC tournament? I'm, I'm not concerned, uh, just basically because of the teams that we lost to and where we lost at. Um, after the Kentucky game, you know, and that was just one loss, I was majorly concerned because I didn't see the defensive effort, I didn't see the desire. Um, but when we avenged that loss here, and I'm like, okay, we're back on track. We lose the LSU on the road, tough place to Close play, game. good team, yeah. yeah. Auburn, we lose to them. We had a chance to win. So uh, it, it doesn't concern me. A few little things concern me in that game, but, but overall, I, I'm not worried at all. You concerned about a carryover? Or uh, is it fresh depth. Season? I'm concerned about depth. I'm concerned about what what's, uh, Pond's going to give you, Jalen Johnson going to give you, Derek Walker. What are those guys going to do? Because when they're in the game, our plus minus were, were not very effective. Yeah, Pons wasn't in the game at all yesterday. And that was, that was uh, Pearls. He said it after the game. He said, I just wanted to run. I didn't call any timeouts in the first half. I wanted to wear them down because we didn't play many people. Which they haven't all year. A lot of guys playing a lot of minutes. We've been pointing to that for weeks. All right, Mark Pankratz, uh, how much scouting is there to do at this point? You've seen the teams in the conference. So how much scouting is done going into an SEC tournament? Tennessee, for example, we'll show it a little later. More than likely going to play Mississippi State in their first game. How much would Tennessee scout a team that they played a week ago? Yeah, so they'll typically have the assistant coaches. This is the first time you can live scout, so assistant coaches will go to definitely everybody that's on your side of the bracket and not trying to learn a bunch of stuff other than play calls. What are the actual names of the plays? And then as a staff, you'll go back and watch uh, your games against those opponents. So if Tennessee plays Mississippi State, you'll go back and watch that game. Uh, you'll go back and watch if you play Kentucky, watch those games. Uh, but the live scouting, getting actual play calls is really what you're looking for. All right. Isaiah, I go back to you here. As someone who's played in SEC tournaments, four of them, if you could give one tip from your years of playing in the tournament, is there one nugget that you learned that you thought helped a team uh, going through that, that situation? What tip would you give to this year's team? Uh, just be aggressive and uh, start it early. And defensively especially, um, but, but get going. Don't wait for anybody to go on a run and, and then wake up three or four minutes into the game because you got a lot of teams out there, they want to go to the tournament too. And if they win the SEC tournament, they can get in. Um, so you got eight or nine teams that are just starving uh, to get in. They're they going to want to try to take what you got on your plate. So, And this is a big tournament to us. A lot of people talk like it's a meaningless tournament, but we hadn't won it since 1979, so I don't think we're in a position to, to feel that way. So. All right, well, that feeds right into my next question from Mark Pankratz. Off air last week, you mentioned that, uh, by my definition, all things being equal, if you're a number two seed, no matter what, we'll say. So losing to Kentucky in the semifinals isn't going to change your seed one bit. If you beat Kentucky and win the turn, go on win the tournament, it's not going to change your seed. You're still a number two. If that's what we're saying, and you had your choice, would you win the tournament for winning the tournament's sake, or would you rather have a day's rest? Well, I, I'll give you a caveat. I always want to win. It no, I always want to win uh, <laughs> each game you play. But if this being a tournament sport, you fast forward. I didn't even know that the last SEC championship was in 1970, whatever. 
but I can tell you when we went to the Elite Eight. I can tell you when teams went to the Sweet 16. It's a tournament sport. And so for me, if a team's going to be an judged. NCAA tournament an NCAA sport. tournament sport. A team is going to be judged. A coaching staff is going to be judged. How far do you go in the NCAA tournament? So with that said, I don't mind if we end up losing. Yes, Kentucky, it hurts a little bit more. But if you lose in the semifinals, the SEC, because now that gives you an extra day rest. If all things are equal, I'm going to be a two seed no matter what. Um, then I'm, I want the rest because we need it because of our lack of depth. So that gives us a better opportunity to go further in the NCAA tournament. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, I agree. You, you play to win every game, obviously. But I wouldn't fret too much if you lost. The main reason, I just don't see a lot of value in the SEC tournament, the conference tournaments. If it's a small league and that's your automatic bid, okay. But I, I couldn't tell you who won quick. Who won the 2013 SEC tournament? Best guess uh, would be Kentucky. Well, <laughs> <laughs> safest guess. <laughs> All right. Proves my point. What's, what's the difference? It's always Kentucky. All right. Uh, a little later, could anything less than a miracle save Polly Warlick at this point? Does she even need a miracle? Is she in good footing? We'll discuss where Philip Fulmer might be on that situation. But next, we're going to talk a little bit more uh, basketball. Come on back on the Sports Source.